everyone so this video will be on plant available water if you remember we touched on this when we were talking about macropores versus micropores and how there can be moisture in the soil it's not plant available and so in this video we will try to tease some of that out so plant available water is the amount of moisture in the soil that is plant available that makes sense um, what is it affected by though so it can be affected by organic matter, the soil texture, and then the porosity of the soil as well. And uh, an easy way to conceptualize this is with this graph. So all these numbers are estimates. These aren't um, like hard and true numbers, but it gives us an idea of where our plant available water exists. So on the top line here, the solid line is our field capacity. So this is the amount of moisture in the soil uh, 24 hours after it's been saturated. So think of like a, an all day steady rainfall, that soil becomes saturated. If we come back the next day, that soil is said to be at field capacity. Our bottom line here is the permanent wilting point. So this is the point of at which um, plants will lose their turgidity and can no longer recover. So once a plant moves past its permanent wilting point, it is dead. End of story. So in between those two lines is our plant available water. And so we need to manage our soil moisture content to stay within this range, ideally close to field capacity. So as we move down these lines, um, our plant isn't dead, but our photosynthesis is probably slowed. Uh, it's starting to take actions to conserve water so that it doesn't die. So we want to maintain in the upper quarter, upper third of this range here. Again, field capacity and the amount of moisture after soil is allowed to freely drain after saturation. So this is just draining by gravity. And then permanent wilting point is the amount of moisture after which plants can no longer regain turgor pressure. And then our plant available water is the amount of soil water content between there. And then the bottom here we have our soil textural classes. So if you think of those macropores, sand is very full of macropores, almost no micropores, and so its ability to hold water is pretty low. So then you think, oh, well then we want lots of mac micropores, right? Well, when we have all those micropores, the particles are able to hold on to the water stronger than the plant can get it. And so this is why we see our most productive soils in this loam to silt loam area here. Um, highest water availability, plant available water. Um, so require the least amount of irrigation, um, least amount of water stress on the plants. So soil color, so soil color relates to the mineral composition and fertility of the soil. Uh, it's also an indicator of wetness and is used to determine land use. Provides many valuable clues uh, in sort of the history of the site. So if you're there on one day, looking at the soil color can give you an idea of what the soil moisture looks like over the course of a year or over the course of several years. It's sort of a snapshot into the history of the soil. When people think of soil, they might think of dirt and think that it's brown, it's dark, it's dirty, um, but that assumption is wrong. So soil color's importance, uh, going back to chlorpt, soil color can tell us about the parent material. It is a good indicator of fertility and organic matter, um, temperature and drainage, and then is also used in soil classification. If you remember back to that video, um, sort of some of the oxisols versus the molosols and iridosols, things like that. Uh, so a color is determined by organic matter, uh, different elements in the soil, iron, manganese, and other salts and minerals, as well as the amount of water. So water can affect a profile here. Uh, is a molosol on the right. We see the profile has just been wetted, and so this was exposed and dried out sprayed it down with some water on the right so the between the right soil and the left soil exact same soil this side has just been wetted 
So that's the importance of moisture when determining soil color. Uh, here, you can see oxidized iron on all these little hilltops. And um, in this shot, again, we see oxidized iron down in the soil profile. Here's another good shot of modeling. Uh, you can see how happy he is to get this awesome, nice, deep soil pit and just see these beautiful colors in the soil. Uh, in a more urban setting, we might see things like um, you know, an old path, even buried roads, um, old garbage, old burn spots. Um, this could have been development, so just some fill that was brought in from somewhere else and dumped in there. And so digging a pit like this gives us a good idea of what is going on in the soil. And those differences are easily teased out um, with a snapshot of the color. Again, here's the modeling. So we have water movement. And then um, the redox concentrations are in red, depletions in gray. So this uh, would be an indicator of our water table. And so that's one of the ways that soil color is used. Um, if you ever have your soil tested for a septic system, uh, they are looking for depth to water table, and that is determined. Um, seasonal water table in the Midwest can be much higher than it, maybe if you're testing in August. Um, the water table would be much lower than if you were testing in April. And so that seasonal wetness is shown in the redox and depletion um, concentrations of the soil profile. So soil color measurement. Um, subjective and objective. We measure it using Munsell color charts on a wet soil. So the Munsell color charts measure the hue, value, and chroma of the soil. And so a soil color um, on the Munsell color chart would be like 10YR43. So 10YR is our hue, 4 is our value, and 3 is our chroma. So hue is the dominant wavelength or the color. Uh, the value is the brilliance of the color, so the lightness or darkness. And then chroma is the purity. So we'll go through all those. So hue uh, is just the dominant color. 10YR, 5YR, um, really common in our Midwest soils here. And then the intensity uh, or the value, um, so kind of this range here, the value range from a light pink to a dark red, just sort of the intensity of the color, and then the purity um, of a chart. So purity increases to the right here. So we you know, kind of a grayish all the way to a nice pure peach. And so here's a shot of a color page on the Mensal color book. And then so we have our value pages are orientated by value. So this page is 10 YR, or sorry, not value, hue. Each page is a different hue. So we have 10 YR, then we go to value on the left. So from two up to eight on this sheet, and then our chroma on the bottom, so one to eight. And um, you hold the soil behind the chip. So here's the soil sample through the little viewing glass or viewing window. And then you do this in full sun of a wet soil sample to determine the soil color. So here's an example. Uh, if someone records a soil color of 10YR64. So the hue is 10YR, value 6, chroma 4. And it ends up being this yellowish brown color right down here is 10YR64. So that's the proper way to, to note that and to say that it's not 10 years, 6, 4, it's 10YR, 6, 4.